After two years of promises, they gave my promotion to the worst person on the team, so I left and let them sink. I've been at my company as a graphic designer in the marketing department for around three to four years. When I started, it was just three of us in the team, including a team lead I respected deeply. The team was small, but I loved the creative challenges and working closely with my coworkers. As our team grew, I quickly stood out as one of the most dedicated and fastest designers. I trained every new hire, led projects, delivered presentations, and even organized workshops for the team. Over time, I took on the kind of responsibilities you'd expect of a senior designer and poured everything into each project. Then, things started to change. My team lead left, which meant even more responsibilities landed on my plate as we had no replacement for over a year. It felt like a perfect opportunity to prove myself and show that I was ready for the senior designer role. I was told during my annual review that I was on track and if I kept up the hard work, I'd be promoted after another year. But that's when I saw something that made my stomach drop. A newer coworker, a notoriously lazy, toxic type, had just been promoted to senior designer. I was stunned. She would joined the team much later than me, did the absolute bare minimum and constantly passed her unfinished projects to me because I was fast. I couldn't believe it. She didn't have a clue about design strategy, stakeholder management, or even team collaboration. Most of the time, she'd sweet-talk the higher-ups, taking credit for things she didn't do and then passing any real work to the rest of us. What really killed me was seeing her parading around, acting like a leader, telling everyone else how to work, and setting team guidelines she barely followed herself. She even had a reputation among stakeholders as impossible to work with, they frequently requested that I handle their projects instead of her. After months of this, we finally got a new team lead, and I saw a chance to fight for the promotion I'd been promised. I put together a presentation with all my project successes, positive feedback from coworkers, and a portfolio of senior-level work I'd been handling. The team lead was impressed and acknowledged that I was one of the most talented designers on the team. I thought, finally, someone saw my hard work. But not long after, the same coworker messed up a big project, affecting not only my workflow but also my reputation because she looped me into it to cover for her. I corrected her work, but instead of appreciation, she stormed into the office and started yelling, accusing me of embarrassing her in front of the stakeholder. I calmly explained that I was simply following project guidelines, which she had ignored. When our team lead got involved, he agreed that I was in the right, but he still seemed scared to confront her fully and ended up coddling her to keep her quiet. By the time my next annual review rolled around, I'd had enough but held on to a shred of hope that I'd finally be recognized. Instead, my team lead gave me a three-star rating out five and told me I should be more present. He had the nerve to compare me to the lazy coworker, saying I needed to emulate her social presence. I was floored. I'd been the one keeping our team running, training new hires, checking on everyone's work, even fixing her mistakes, and this was how he rewarded me? I refused to sign the review papers, telling him I wouldn't be proving anything else. I told him that if he thought she was senior material, then he could let her do the work. I'd be stepping back and doing only what was required. No more senior level tasks, no more training, no more rescuing her half-finished projects. He started panicking, offering me the promotion in six months instead of a year, but I was done. Two weeks later, I accepted a higher paying job offer and handed in my notice. My manager was shocked, begging me to stay and asking what he could do. I told him there was nothing he could say that would make up for the years of disrespect. As soon as I decided to leave, I knew exactly how I'd handle my departure. Since all those senior tasks were no longer my problem, I wasn't going to spend my final two weeks writing down guidelines or passing on any of the knowledge I'd built up over the years. After all, if I wasn't senior enough to earn the title, why should I act like one? Almost 60% of the work processes, design systems, and templates that kept our team afloat were things I had built from scratch, and I knew it would take them months to untangle the gaps I was about to leave behind. The team leader must have realized this pretty quickly because, every day, he started showing up at my desk with another desperate plea for help. Just a few guidelines, he'd say, or just walk us through the workflow one last time. Each time, I reminded him that he'd refused my promotion, and as I saw it, that meant my time and expertise were no longer his to ask for. The day I handed in my badge and walked out of that building was the first time I felt genuinely free in years. Now, I'm in a new job where my contributions are recognized and rewarded. Looking back, I can only hope this experience was a lesson for my former team lead and his senior designer. Maybe they'll learn what happens when you ignore someone's hard work and loyalty for the wrong reasons. But honestly, that's no longer my problem.